So I would love to start with the question of, of the story, right? Uh, so Gilles is a professional ballet dancer, had a successful career in France in, in ballet, um, and then became interested in tango. I, yes. I think in, in general, different cultural dances. Yeah. He had um, an interest in Native American dances and, um, and kind of stumbled upon the Malambo. Um, and actually, in, it was in a cabaret. In, in Lido, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, in Paris, yeah. he saw a little vignette and it kind of um, stuck with him. And this was in the 70s, I believe. Yeah, it is, yeah. um, you can interrupt me. We finish each other's sentences now. So, um, and many, many years later, he, wh what year was it, Jew? I woke up with uh, Malambo in the head. <laughs> so he woke up kind of an epiphany of, of Malambo and it was something. And I go back on his chest, <laughs> something he felt that he had to do, uh, some of, something of a calling. Um, and so he, he made some drastic changes. He, uh, he actually sold a piece of property and he got on a plane and he flew to Argentina in search of this dream of the gauchos. Um, he wanted to, to do something with it and um, walking around trying to, it was a struggle in the beginning in Buenos Aires. You want to tell us a little bit about that? All my life. Uh, uh, it's for dance, and uh, I follow the dance, and uh, I meet Gaucho, <laughs> I meet Malambo, I meet the Malambist, and uh, I follow my way with them, and we make uh, something um, with the heart. <laughs> <laughs> the company's been on tour for about six weeks now, and I think every city that we come to, he, after, after the performance, he comes and says, so, so what is this? Is it a concert? Is it dance? Is it a show? Is it a spectacle? And what he just said now, I think, is, is important. It's really the essence. It's, it's just, it's dance. It's music is a part of that. Show is a part of that. The spectacle. Um, so he, you know, Gilles has this vision of packaging uh, the Malambo in a way that's never been done before. It's not an uh, academicized form of dance. It's never really been presented this way at all. Um, but he has this, this you know, vision from his experience as a classical ballet dancer and working um, in companies uh, to, to kind of put it together a different way. It's a very collaborative process. He doesn't call himself a choreographer. Um, he doesn't claim to, to know the steps of Malambo, but the way that he works with the dancers, it's, it's very, um, it's a, kind of a communal process. Um, they all work on it together and they've come up with this show. I think the art, the most important is art of life. And uh, I meet this kind of life with the Argentinian dancers. But art of life first. <laughs> the art of life. Following that thread, um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how these performers trained in Malambo. So Malambo, it, it's not something that they necessarily learn in school. It's really part of their culture. Uh, it's something that they've that's been passed down to them from from teachers, from family members. Uh, it's something they do together whenever their families get together on the weekends. Um, now that it's such an important part of their life, this is all they do constantly. It's it's as soon as we get into the van and go back to the hotel, Malambo music is on. It's uh, they landed after an 18-hour flight, and I gave them their guitars to tune, and all of a sudden I hear them rocking out in the room next door for hours, just. It's, 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 it's their life. It's not necessarily a dance. It's the art of life yeah. uh, for them. So, um, so th these guys, yeah, you know, they, they, all, they all have their own day jobs um, for now until they're touring, until they, they can't keep a day job. But um, some of them are carpenters, drivers, yeah. teachers. Uh, one of them has his own little uh, plumbing company. There's a farmer. Um, so this is really different for them. Um, and, and this crazy, I say this very endearingly, um, Frenchman came and said, hey, let's put this show together. And I, from what I've been told, they, he, there was a lot of friction in the, folk, the folklore community um, that he was somehow perverting the art of Malambo. 
um, and, and that he wasn't being true to its origins. But like, again, what he says, it's, it's, it's dance, you know, it's not right or wrong. There's, it's just a different way of presenting it. Um, and I think it's taken some time to persuade even some of the members in the company. They weren't instantly enamored with his idea of what, what he wanted to do with the art form. Um, but now they are, and they, and they got behind it. And I think also his way of approaching it as a collaborative process, um, not coming from the outside telling them what to do, but getting in with them um, and trying to figure out just a different way of doing things. So did these men know each other before they met you? Algunos, some of them, but not all of them. Ah, not, not at all. When I begin Marambo, this, this, this work, there is uh, not too much Malambist. It was very difficult to meet them. It was very uh, closed. And in Buenos Aires, they don't like too much the folklore of the Pampa. Yeah, it's, 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 back. it's not really... I say respected, but it's not something you see that much, you know, especially in a city like Buenos Aires. The export is tango by default, and that's what you see. So the, Malam the Malambis, the, the dancers, the Malambo dancers, have always kind of been in the hinterlands and doing their own thing and never really out in the front. So it took him a while. In fact, he was there for three months initially. Um, in Buenos Aires, roaming around asking people where you can find them. And a lot of people tried to discourage him, saying, oh, you're crazy, what are you going to do with the Malambo? These guys, you know, yeah. you can't put it on the stage. And, and you, it's, it's also difficult to find dancers that can sing, that can do the, the, the barefoot percussive footwork, the, the, the percussive footwork with boots from the north of Argentina. They play the drums, they do the lassos. They, they, it, it's very difficult to find someone that can really excel on all different fronts. Some of them are great at the lassos or the boleadoras, and some of them are good at footwork. But, but to get 14 guys that can do it all, it takes the time. boleadoras was not so used. Uh, they say it's for circus. But I like circus, too. <laughs> <laughs> Have you toured Argentina, and how has it been received? A, f a friend of mine is a, a producer in Argentina, um, and he used to be the executive director of the Teatro Colón, so he, you know, he really knows the Argentine culture. And I told him whenever I met Gilles about a year and a half ago, I said, oh, I, there's this group of Malambo dancers I'm going to start working with. And he said, you're crazy. No, don't do it. Don't do it. And now he still doesn't believe it. I, I'm telling him, I say, really, this, this group is good, and they're having success, and they're getting good reviews, and they're traveling around the world, and they're in demand, and he, he, still, doesn't, he still doesn't believe it. I, I keep trying to convince him to do a show, but he's not quite convinced. So, um, But no, they, they really don't perform in Argentina. I don't think we've ever done, there's never been an official performance. They've done some open stuff uh, for family and friends, but never ticketed performances. So a question about touring and care personal care, health care, um, and do you have alternate casts? One time, one dancer getting a lesion. He, he, he was uh, injured. Yes. injured. And I bring it to the veterinary. To the veterinary. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that one. I'll have no, to get the backstory on it. It's true because the veterinary was my friend, and he was he had a radiography in Fusina oh, for the X-rays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had on, on on this tour. There really hasn't. We had one one dancer actually. The first performance of all, he pulled his hamstring quite severely. No, it's a problem. So. Uh, it changes. I mean, if it gets to the point where they can't go on stage, then it's flexible. You know, they have to rehearse and kind of re, which is a nice thing. Um, for example, that dancer was able to walk and could do some of the light movement, but he couldn't do any of the heavy percussive footwork. So he was on the drum. Um, he, he ended up being the drummer and then the drummer substituted him in a different place. So it's kind of all fungible. It, it can move around. The good thing is they all, they all know all the different roles and they can all do all the different solos. So that works.